Drink, yeah. Yeah, go for it. Hey. John, how, how's he how's he looking? He is looking good to be fair, pal. He's just we know we're near the year, yeah, and then everybody what trains fighters have been in camps, he's hopefully four week out, he's not gonna be flying yet because once you've reached the top of the mountain, you're probably gonna come back down. But I'm very happy with him. He's been away. He had an holiday booked a long, long time, but he went, took his running gear. His dad went with him, so I had him spying on him, to be fair. Dad was spying on your mates, weren't they? Yeah, I saw him this morning. I'm going past it about, I went early, about half seven. It's still dark in Spain. It's just beer. It's just beer. <laughs> Is it, I take you'll be coming down to Texas as well, yeah? Yeah, I think he will, yeah. Yeah? It was nailed on, but... So his, yeah. his, his dad, it's, it's great actually, because his dad is, is the trainer with me. So oh, he, right, he okay. trains the amateurs with me, and he's my second in the corner. So it's, uh, it works out perfect. But um, when he went over there, I said, you best start watching it. You best be watching him, Graham. And he went, I will, I will, I will. He got me a picture. Like, he snuck up behind him. And he got a picture of him without even knowing that he was running. And I went, have you <laughs> snuck up behind him? I just wanted to make sure you were doing it. So he's, he were, so he's gone, he's done that. He's kept his weight down. And then obviously, as soon as you get back, it's just sharpening up now. So I said to him, as soon as you get back, that's when we'll arrange sparring. We'll pick us, uh, pick us sessions up, get your strength in while you're away. There's a gym there, your runs and stuff. So it's not hard, is it? You're 23 now, mate? Yeah, 23. It's not, it's not easy, sorry, as a 23-year-old to go to have Benny Dome booked for a week, right? <laughs> and then think, oh, I I'll work my fights around it and I'll do this and I'll go and I'll enjoy myself. So then me said to you, well, you can go to Benidorm, pal, but that's a training camp. So and he ran every morning, he went to the gym every morning, he was, his dad took some pads and stuff with him and stuff like that. So I'm very happy the fact that he did that. And he didn't, he didn't come back five kilo ever or six kilo ever or s stinking of Benidorm, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so I was well happy with him. And we've got, we've got three weeks at you, four weeks at you. Uh, three weeks at you, yeah. It's not, it's not long now, I mean... Not far at all. The opponent as well, that we'll talk afterwards is all about this. I mean, just catching you off the fly now, but the opponent, guys, he's, he's an experienced lad, isn't he, to be fair? 31 fights. You're going out there to make a big statement. You're representing Team UK, Spencer Oliver. Roy Jones Jr. is going to be there as well. I mean, you're buzzing, aren't you, Mason? Yeah, it's big names to impress, but it's, a, it's another name to claim on my record and we'll just keep winning and keep growing. We'll get bigger opportunities after this. I love, I love the fact, and, and I'm always honest with my kids. Always honest with them. I can't see. I'll always look after my kids, and I'll always keep from them the things they don't need to know. But 99% of the time, I'm honest with them. And it is a risk. So Mason's 5-0 now. I said to him, we sat down here, and I said, listen, you've had this opportunity to come up. We could just keep building your record, getting you the usual suspects in, and 10-0, and 11-0, and 12-0. And I said, but really, pal, like... What, what do you want to achieve out of this sport? Like we, we spoke a little bit of self, and this is, this is no digging out anybody in the sport whatsoever. The, the, the sport's changed a little bit since when I was boxing pro and when you first started covering it and things like that. But 
a lot of kids might be 12 and 15 and 09, they can't fight and who've they beat and they then go and box for an area title and, and they're struggling. It's, this sport's about taking risks. And I said to me, so and this is a big risk. I went, the guy you're boxing, he's a 30 bout, a Mexican. Like I said earlier on, I said, I looked at him and I hoped he was about 45 if I were honest, but he weren't, he was 27, 28, whatever he is. I said, this is a risk, mate. I said, but life and boxing is about taking risks. You take this risk now, and you're on this massive show like Roy Jones, Spencer Oliver, what Dennis has put together and John's helped put together and fights on and stuff. I said, and you go and beat this kid, you're propelling yourself. And I said, and you know what? Worse comes to worse, and you don't go and beat this kid, right? You've been in a proper fight on a proper show, around proper boxers, around proper people, around proper boxing people, right? A loss isn't the end of the world anymore. Like, Sugar Ray Leonard lost, Muhammad Ali lost, Rigor Duran lost. If you're losing against proper kids, right, in a proper fight, we can move forward. He's not going to lose, by the way. Right? But what I'm saying is, are you willing to take this risk or do you want to be another young kid what wants to just go and box on his own show and box journeymen or box kids what will go on the road and just maybe get to ten or maybe box for an area title and then they say, what do you want to he went, I'm taking this. He says, I'm going. And I went, perfect, let's do it. And I think I think the, the, the sport is starting to lose them fighters what will go and take a risk. Mm. Going, no, it's got to be a calculated risk, by the way. I'm not just going to chuck him in with anybody. Eh? But I truly believe, and we watched this kid, I think Mason can go and beat this kid, 100%. But it's going to be a hard fight. But what's the point? What's the point boxing if you're not wanting to be in hard fights? And you're not wanting to, come on, who doesn't want you coming and interviewing him on pads? Who doesn't want to box in Texas? Who doesn't want press conferences? And I need an holiday. <laughs> I've got That's some the main kids reason, at home and a wife. I need an holiday, me. <laughs> Don't mind if we're boxing Barrera and have been boxing. <laughs> Regardless, it's going to be a great night when, when, when you do go over there, Mason. We look forward to seeing what you're doing on the pads next as well, mate, to be fair. So uh, let's see what you got. Let's go. Let's roll out for me. Roll out back I won't ask you to turn the cup around, especially when you've got a mouthful. Oh, well, yeah, I, did have a, <laughs> uh, I, have, I have got a mouthful. <laughs> um, but yeah, some of these drills that you're running today, then, is this is this all in terms of game for, for when you go to Texas? Yeah. You don't want to give too much away as well, do you? So no. What's the fine balance between showing us what you're going to be doing on the night but not giving away too much as well, lads? I think it's hard because you don't want to... You don't want to be giving everything away because if, if the kid's doing his job properly and he is watching stuff and he is having a look and he, he'll be watching this when it comes out and things like that. But I think evidently, like, you didn't know I know that word, did you? No, evidently, that's a big word, right? <laughs> you I look think, shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I think evidently, I, I personally believe, like, listen, we are in 2024 and 
and everything has progressed. But I think some people still, they try to overcomplicate boxing. At the end of the day, right, we've got our plan and we don't want him to know exactly. But we've still got to go and put that plan into place and he's still got to stop us going and putting that plan into place. So obviously, if the plan is to turn south pole, go on the back foot, right, I don't want him to know we're going to turn south pole, go on the back foot. But I think we both kind of know Mason's not going to start dancing about South Pole going on the back foot. We know he's a come forward fighter. We know he can box a little bit as well, right? So, without giving too much away, he's going to kind of know what we're doing anyway. Do you know what I mean? But the drills, what we have seen, what the, the, the bits, what I have seen, what will work, it kind of plays into Mason's strengths anyway. He's a fit kid. He's a dedicated kid. He's come on leaps on bounds with moving his head. So when I first got Mason, he, he, he took too many shots in your pocket. Yeah, he weren't always that ugly, right? <laughs> so he took too many shots and he just worked at it, worked at it, worked at it. So I think we can get Mason moving his head and pressure fighting and not getting it as much as he were. Then, then basically that's the game plan with every fight, with his career anyway. So um, yeah, it's, it's a fine line, but I'm pretty sure you're not expecting him to to box any different to kind of what we're showing them now anyway, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. So make me. sure you box South Paul when we get there. <laughs> oh, again. <laughs> and in, in, in regards to yourself as well, I mean, look, such a, such a big show. Is there a bit of pressure there in terms of you want to put on a massive display because of the, the occasion, shall we just say? Because some people, they do sometimes get carried away, don't they, as well? So how are you yeah, going to stay grounded? Well, to be fair, that's where amateurs comes in. I'm glad I'd, I was always into away fighter as an amateur. I remember going to Leeds and I had a hall full of uni students just booing me, calling me all sorts. So I'm, I'm used to hostile atmospheres and I feel like that's when I need to prove a point and it feeds to my advantage. Um, adrenaline gets going and confidence grows and confident fighter is a dangerous fighter. So that'll be me in Texas. I'm comfortable in any situation. I mean, in regards to what's next then, guys, what, what is next after this? I mean, depending on win, lose or draw. If we if we say it's going to be a win, what, yeah. what's what's next for Mason? Unbeaten kid, we're going to be in October. Yeah, we got two three months left of the year. What what what's next then? What I, do you reckon? I personally think what next is we don't change anything too much. There's no point. So this is a risk. We took a risk, and I'm I'm fully confident the risk is going to pay off. He's going he's going to beat this kid. He's going to have a great night. Brilliant, more eyes on him and stuff like that, which, which will open him up to a bit more of a, an audience, which will be great. But we don't then come back and start saying, right, get on that phone, he's boxing another Mexican, he's boxing another Umbrian kid. Because he's still a baby, he's still 23. Light middleweight, so he's a baby, right? What do you have amateurs, 20 odd? 20 odd amateurs? 28. 28 amateurs and what? So he's about a 30 odd bout on, right? He boxed a lot of good kids, so he's had a lot of experience, but he still is a baby, man. Right, so when we come back, we get this win and we come back, everybody's buzzing, everybody is up here, right, he can box him, he can box him. My job is to be Victor Meldrew, right, and say, right, well, he's not boxing him, he's not boxing him. We're coming back to the original plan. We're getting good tests. All these tests, even the, the I keep saying journeyman, I don't like saying that word, but even the, the road fights, the kids rock come on the road to fight, have not been the typical... 1-4, lost 120, like, box Dale Aronsmith, great kid. Jordan Graham, Granham, very mm. good fighter, right? He only boxed on rocks, he don't want to sell tickets, basically, right? And his second fight, you boxed the Latvian kid, didn't you, in motor? Yeah. yeah. He was like 1-4, lost 4 or something like that, like, coming out of go. Uh, Sanchez on his debut, I know Sanchez were getting on a bit, but he were 120, lost 25 or something. So he's not boxed the typical kind of kid. So, because the plan always were, if you start boxing these kids now, and get used to fighting somebody with a pulse and someone wants going to have a bit of a go, by the time you've had 10, you're more than ready to pop for your area title. So that will be the plan still. Still bring him back, a couple more six rounders, maybe one eight rounder. And when he's had nine, 10, and I and Dennis feel, and his dad and dad, and, and, and he, we feel as if, yeah, he's earned, his, he's earned his stripes now, he's ready to go. Then it'll be an area title. Then it might be an English title, then it might be a Commonwealth. And then with, with somebody like Dennis behind us, who just can just pull stuff out of nowhere. Like, there's no reason once he wins his area title that the door can't open to anything then. Your Commonwealth, your, your internationals, your, your British, and things like that. So, yeah, I just feel like once he's done this, it's gonna be my job to put the brakes on a little bit more because himself and everyone else is gonna think, right, brilliant, we can chuck him in again.
mm. we can chuck him in here again. We can do that because he's done so well. If he's the right fight, it's the right risk, he'll go in again. I might need another holiday, right? <laughs> so if there's another fight comes up somewhere else, right, he might go in again. But it will be my job to then think, right, is this the right risk? Is this the wrong risk? It might be hard because he might win in Texas and his next fight might be a four-rounder. It, it, Bramall Lane or I Sheffield or someone, he'll think, hang on a minute, I've just been in Texas, blah, blah. But then that's his job to know, to trust me, trust Dennis, trust the process, and just just keep going along the right path. And then that will let, lead you to your destination. Good stuff.